Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator, the Motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey that we call life. Guys, thank you so much for being here. It is Mental Health Awareness Month. So the theme for the month of June is going to be how to take care of your mind uh, and incorporate your, your body and your soul together to have that kind of holistic approach to uh, mental health. So that's what we're going to get into this month. That today we're going to be specifically talking about men's health and why it's crucial for men to have strong mental health in society. If you are tuning to this on YouTube or Rumble or Odyssey or wherever you're listening or watching this platform, please share it with the, the world. Share it with your friends. Text to them right now. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, Good Pods, Amazon, wherever, uh, please leave a review. Share it with the world there as well. Also, check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. That's going to take you to kind of the hub for all things Three Pillars. Check us out on Instagram at the Three Pillars Podcast, Twitter, Facebook. We are all over the place. So all the housekeeping stuff aside, getting that out of the way on the front end because we got a lot to talk about today and today's episode. So uh, we're going to start with a quick word of prayer as always, and then we're going to dive right in. So will you pray with me? Father God, we love you so much. Thank you for giving us clarity. Thank you for giving us a vision. Thank you for giving us an example to emulate and how to love and how to treat people and how also to be fair, just, and merciful uh, when the time is right. Lord, we struggle daily uh, to try to find our grasp and try to find our purpose, but with you as our foundation, it is so much easier to navigate the the craziness and the wilds of the world because we have a, a light in our path, and that is you, and that's your son, Jesus. God, I ask that you be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. Uh, Lord, I ask all this in your holy name. Amen. All right. So I've got something kind of written up right now. It's not kind of written up. It is written up. It's more of a script, but I wanted to actually get into the weeds a little bit on this um, with mental health, especially men's mental health and why it is so important. And it's probably going to be a little longer than, than normal. And I'm going to put some references and some programs in the show notes for you guys. Uh, that way, if you are struggling mentally, uh, know that you are, number one, not alone. Uh, and number two, that there are people and things and resources out there to help you cope and to get through it and to be better. Because if you are able to get yourself out of a hole, you can jump down in a hole with somebody else and help get them out as well. So that's the whole kind of the theme for this entire podcast is to give you guys tools that you can go help other people with, not just yourself. That's the ultimate thing. Fix yourself, then you can go help other people or help other people while you're fixing yourself. That's what we're going to get into. So men's mental health and its importance to society. So let's jump right into it. So again, I've got this written out. Let's just plow through it. I'll I'll veer off like normal and and get into it, but this is just um, something we all need to hear and something we all need to take in. So here we go. Men's mental health is a crucial aspect of overall societal well-being, yet it remains significantly underrepresented in public discourse. Historically, cultural norms and stigmas have discouraged men from expressing vulnerability or seeking help for mental issues. So this episode, we're going to focus on the impact of men's mental health in society, and we're also going to highlight some strategies to strengthen your mental health uh, through a holistic approach, again, using our Christian faith physical fitness, and these mental health strategies we're going to get into. So how does mental health affect men in society or society as a whole? Well, firstly, there's an economic impact. Men's mental health has a direct and substantial impact on the economy. Poor mental health can lead to decreased productivity, higher absenteeism, and increased health care costs. Studies have shown that mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety can significantly reduce workplace performance and increase the likelihood of unemployment. In the United States alone, the economic burden of mental health conditions is estimated to be over $200 billion annually, with a a considerable portion of that is attributed to men and and our mental health. So that's huge. If you are in a state of depression, you're not going to be as productive. It's just that they go hand in hand with one another. If you're less productive, your whole company is less productive and so on and so forth. We want to be as efficient and optimal as possible. That way you can also get a lot more done and feel a lot more accomplished. I can get more done in you know four hours of solid focus, hard work than eight hours droning on throughout throughout the day. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe the way our work schedules are, we're not working in factories anymore. If anything we've learned over the past couple of years is that there are hybrid workflows, especially if you're in, in a profession like sales. Now, if you've got to go to on a construction site and do things like that, 
that's what you chose to do. But that's also a part of an outlet as well, because you were in there working hard, doing something that you, you like to do and you're building things. That's awesome. Men, men build society is just, is what it is. Thank God for that. Um, but you've got to try to be as optimal as possible because if you're not, especially on a job, say in the military, in um, a construction site, a police, fire, EMS, sales, whatever you're in, if you are not performing optimally, people could get hurt and you could get fired and you don't want to end up un unemployed. And now you're, uh, you know, putting more of a burden on the system. You know, the, the system's only, uh, we, we all know the system's not perfect. It exists for, for, to a point, but if you are not putting something back into the system, you're constantly taking away from it. That takes away from everybody else. You may need something. People go through job losses, just things happen. And it's okay to, I, I, in, in my opinion, the, the system is, is in place because it happened to me. Uh, for about a month, I was unemployed after the military. I got, a, I, like, I was applying for unemployment, everything like that. Before I even got my first uh, unemployment check, I got, a, I had a job interview and I got hired. And they literally, I was on unemployment, collected a check for a month, and then I got off of it. To me, that's how the system should work, is a short-term, temporary fix to help you uh, keep your family fed and, and the bills paid or whatever until you get uh, on to the next thing. That's how it should work. Unfortunately, people fall into this spiral of depression and it just takes and takes and takes and there's never any give back. So the idea is to want to give back to the system to take that $200 billion and turn it into, you know, let's start by slashing it in half if we can, but it focuses on a lot of inner work, okay? Social impact. The social implications of men's mental health are profound. Mental health can, issues can affect family dynamics, leading to strained relationships and diminished quality of life. Men are often the primary breadwinners in many families, and their inability to function effectively due to mental health challenges can create financial and emotional stress for their loved ones. Societal st stigmas, again, surrounding mental health can perpetuate cycles of silence and untreated conditions, and this makes the problem even worse. Because there is that stigma. You say, oh, you need, you need help. You know, that's, oh, you, there's something wrong with you. No, I need help because I need to get better for my family and for myself so I can be back to this optimal level, so I can continue to be the breadwinner, so I can accomplish something and have a sense of self-worth. The stigma of uh, going to a, a therapist should not be there or going to somebody who can help you should not be there because there's not necessarily something wrong with you. So you just need a little extra help. If I am teaching my kid how to do math, say I'm a teacher and I'm teaching kids how to do math and I'm spending all my time with all these kids and doing all these things and the one kid just doesn't understand a problem, but I never get to him because he hasn't said anything that he's, he's struggling trying to understand it. He gets his test. He fails. He doesn't understand why he thinks he's dumb. Maybe that little extra five minutes of work with him. Hey, carry the one. Oh, and now all of a sudden he's an A student. He just they needed that little bit of help. Apply that to mental health. Maybe you just need a little bit of help. Maybe there's a tool in your toolbox that you don't have, in your mental toolbox that you don't have, whether it's effective communication, whether it is you know, anger management issues, whether it's, you know, how do I deal with loss, these things. If you don't have a tool to address that problem, then you're going to go around thinking that there's something wrong with you. And maybe you just need to get somebody to just give you that, that extra tool. So that's why the social impact is, is important, because you, as a man, have to be able to lead people your family, yourself, your your team, whatever it is. But you can't do that if you think that there's something wrong with you. It's nothing, there's nothing wrong with going to seek a little extra help. You know, and instead of calling it a, a, a therapist, maybe call it a tutor. Maybe if we're going to change, if we're going to ch start changing words around, let's throw a more positive spin on it. A counselor, somebody who's going to help me rather than somebody's going to prescribe me medication because that's, you know, <laughs> gets into the, the whole, I'm not going to get into that. But anyways. Public health impact. That's the next topic. So we talked about economic, we've talked about social, now with the public health itself. Men's mental health is a public health concern. Higher rates of substance abuse, suicide, and violent behavior are often linked to untreated mental health issues. According to the World Health Organization, men are three times more likely to die by suicide than women, highlighting this critical need for targeted mental health interventions. And this gets back into everything we've talked about so far. Is if you bottle these things up for so long, there's a problem that goes unresolved, untreated, un unassessed, then it could develop into something terrible, violent or um, violent to others, violence to yourself uh, via, you know, drugs, alcohol, or, or unfortunately suicide. Um, it's, if it's not, a, a, it's not addressed because you're not talking about it, how can we ever fix it? Okay. 
So if you are depressed, if there's something through your family, there's something that's going on in your life. We have to be able to address it on the front end. That way we prevent the, the, uh, the, the horrors on the backside, if that makes sense. So how do we strengthen our mental health? Let's talk about this holistic approach to it. This is the three, three pillars podcast. I like to use those three pillars, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness. Your mental health is multifaceted. It's not just your brain, right? With integrate lots of these aspects of your life. So the first thing is our uh, Christian faith and your mental. That's how, how does faith work with your mental health? So faith can play a pivotal role in promoting mental health among men. Spiritually and, and uh, spirituality and religion offer a sense of purpose, community, and support that can be instrumental in coping with mental health. There are faith-based counseling programs. This combines psychological principles with spiritual guidance. This provides a unique approach to mental health care. Pastoral counselors who are trained in both theology and psychology can offer support that aligns with a person's, with a person's faith, helping them to navigate mental health challenges while reinforcing these spiritual beliefs. Church communities and families, uh, church communities and church families often provide a strong support network for individuals facing mental health issues. Fellowship with other believers can offer emotional support, reduce feelings of isolation, and encourage open discussions about mental health. I just lost my grandfather recently. And as sad as it is to see the amount of love and support coming from my church, his church, our community, the people he was close with, has been almost overwhelming because it's it shows you how important it is to have that community and have that fellowship and have people that care about you you know, in this life and the next. Okay. That's why it's important to, to have that, to be involved in these things, because you never know when somebody just needs a, a positive word and just, especially during times of loss. Okay. So community and fellowship through, um, you know, Christian, uh, the Christian faith specifically, and there's other faiths out there. I'm not knocking on anybody else. I'm just talking from a Christian perspective because I'm a Christian. That's <laughs> in case you didn't know. So check it out. <laughs> Another aspect of the of faith and mental health is prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation are central practices in the Christian faith that can contribute to the mental uh, to mental well being. These practices can help reduce stress, foster a sense of peace, and enhance emotional resilience. Studies have shown that regular prayer and meditation can lower anxiety and depression levels, promoting overall mental health. I've said it many times on this podcast. Add this to your routine. It's going to help set you up at the beginning of the day when you get your mind right for the Lord. It's going to help you at the end of the day when you when you unwind after you have uh, soaked in all the challenges of the day. Put on it's, it's almost put on your armor at the beginning of the day, so you can combat what's, whatever's going on. At the end of the day, it's okay to take it off, set it down, mend it, get your mind right, rest, and then get back in the fight the next day. That's why prayer and meditation is so important because it does give you that sense of peace and it's going to help you with your emotional resilience because you're already used to communicating um, with the Father, right? And finally, just getting into the Word with Scripture. The Bible contains numerous passages that offer comfort and encouragement to those struggling with mental health issues. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it, it, verses like that encourages believers to present their anxiety to God in prayer and it can provide solace and strength during challenging times. It's all throughout the Bible. A lot of the Psalms. And again, there's there's places in the Bible where sometimes you just have to vent to the Lord. It's okay uh, uh, with your prayer and meditation. There's plenty of scriptures that are are these biblical figures uh, <laughs> little airing their grievances out to God and crying out, you know, why is this happening? It's okay to do that. That's part of the uh, the pressure valve and the, and the release. That's going to help you be more resilient in the long run. Switching gears a little bit. Now, physical fitness and mental health. Why is physical fitness so important? Physical fitness is directly linked to mental health. Regular exercise can have uh, just incredible benefits for mental well-being. This reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression while improving mood and cognitive function. And if you want to take physical and actually talk about your, your gut health and things like that too, gut is directly linked to mental health. Maybe there's something wrong with your gut that is not letting the, the hormones and stuff be produced the right way that's getting you all, all kinds of out of whack with your brain and your brain falling and things like that. This is why it is important to Eat right and exercise and drink lots and lots and lots and lots of water. On that note, here we go. First thing, exercise and endorphins. Physical activity stimulates the release of endorphins, which are chemicals in the brain that act as natural painkillers and mood elevators. Exercise helps alleviate stress, boosts self-esteem, improves sleep. All of these things are critical for your mental health. When you go work out, you have a different kind of stress on your body. It's going to alleviate the stress that you've got in the world. It's an outlet. Uh... A guy following Instagram the other day, his name escapes me off the top of my head. And he's, uh, um, 
like a, like an Irish guy. He's in a fitness center. You guys have probably seen him out there. But he had a really great video the other day talking about, you know, guys, especially during Mental Health Month, every month, you need to have an outlet, whether it is running, lifting, art, drawing, writing, podcasting, building something, woodworking, hunting. You have to have an outlet as a man to help alleviate that stress, to, to take your energy and put it into something else. That's going to release positive endorphins too. You're going to have better self-esteem uh, by doing these things, specifically by going to the gym because it's your appearance is going to change. And you're going to look. You're going to look better when you create something. If you're a lumberjack, uh, chainsaw, uh, a law, what is it? A chainsaw artist. You take a, a log of wood and you turn it into like a beautiful owl or a totem pole or something. That's going to boost your self-esteem because who else can do that, right? Goals, right? <laughs> but endorphins and uh, this and this regular exercise is going to help you improve your sleep as well. And sleep, if you're not getting enough sleep, that's going to take a toll on your body. Again, there's certain professions, certain times, certain things that you're not always going to get the eight hours prescribed that you sleep, right? Go do a sleep study. I encourage you guys to do that, to find out what your sleep cycle actually is. Because maybe it's, again, not just eight hours. Maybe it's seven and a half. Maybe it's eight and a half. And if you can time your sleep to correlate with your sleep cycles, you can wake up feeling more rested because you can awaken during one of, uh, the end of one of your sleep cycles rather than in the middle, and you wake up even more tired, if that makes sense. Like mine's seven and a half hours. That's my, my go set means I, I need to sleep seven and a half hours instead of eight. Cause if I sleep eight, I'll feel more tired than I do seven and a half. That's just, I figured it out. That's, that is what it is. Maybe your, your sleep cycle is, you know, four hours on the dot. So you need eight hours. Maybe it's 3.5. You need seven hours, whatever it is. Figure that out with a sleep setting. Easy to do. I encourage all veterans to do that when they get out too, because you never know uh, how that's going to affect your, your ratings and things like that as well. Next structured fitness programs. Engaging in structured fitness programs, weightlifting, running, martial arts can provide a sense of routine and accomplishment. They not only improve physical health, but also uh, offer a constructive outlet for stress and anxiety. Having a plan and executing that plan is something that we need, especially as men, to do. Getting involved in a martial arts club, be uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the, the, the rage right now. Go on the mat and roll around with these guys, CrossFit, whatever. These structured programs are going to help you see results. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube. There's plenty of plans out there you can follow to take yourself to that next level. You just have to put in the effort to do that. And then we already mentioned a little bit, but outdoor activities, hiking, biking, participating in sports can enhance mental health by combining physical exercise with exposure to nature. Nature has a calming effect on the mind and can significantly reduce feelings of stress and improved mood. So get outside. Get in, get in it that way. Touch grass. I got uh, pretty cool announcement on touching grass. Hopefully by the time this drops, uh, I will have been able to record uh, with Zeb Boykin on the touch grass podcast. Stay tuned for that coming out pretty soon. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully uh, we're going to get that later on this week. So that's how physical fitness uh, helps with your overall mental health. Exercise, eat right, go outside, touch grass. <laughs> that's going to, that's going to help you. Trust me. I'm a scientist. <laughs> so third pillar, mental health strategies. So we've already talked about sp spiritual. We've talked about physical. Mental health strategies are crucial, again, for ho this holistic approach. First thing is professional counseling and therapy, okay, whether it's a Christian counselor or just a professional counselor who could just be an unbiased third party you can vent all your problems to. Go sit on the couch, tell them your life story, right? Professional counseling and therapy are fundamental, fundamental components of, health, of mental health care. Cognitive behavioral therapy also known as CBT, for example, has been proven effective in treating various mental health disorders, including depression and anxiety. Therapy provides a safe place for men to explore their emotions, develop coping mechanisms, and address underlying problems. Whatever those problems are, I don't know who my father is. I don't know who my mother is. My dad was beat me. My dad was home, but he wasn't home because he was working all the time. All these things that you can address and maybe figure out what's the root cause of uh, the behavior and not just go straight into drugs and antidepressants and antipsychotics and things like that. Let's get to the root cause and address that and work through that rather than just putting a Band-Aid on a hemorrhage. Good to go. Next part, support groups. Support groups offer a platform for men to share their experiences and receive support from others facing similar challenges. These groups can reduce feelings of isolation, provide practical advice, and foster a sense of community. 
Next is mindfulness and relaxation techniques. Mindfulness and relaxation techniques such as meditation, deep breathing exercises, and progressive muscle relaxation can help manage stress and anxiety. These practices encourage present moment awareness and relaxation, which are crucial to mental health uh, and well-being. That gets into prayer and meditation. When you are praying, when you're meditating, you need to be focused on your breathing as well. When you're getting ready to wind down at the end of the day, big deep breaths in. You know, I, I call it seven, seven, or was eight, seven, four, or seven, four, eight, whichever one. You take a, a long deep breath for seven or eight seconds, hold it for four, and then release it for seven or eight seconds. You do that over the course of a couple minutes, you'll fall right to sleep. If you're doing that while you're praying. Over and over again, you'll fall right to sleep. You'll get really great sleep because you have pumped your body full of oxygen that you may be depriving yourself of otherwise, okay? But that present moment awareness, if you're in the moment speaking to the Lord and listening to him while you are breathing, that's going to help calm you down and help get your mind right, as it were. So that's kind of a, a hybrid between mental and spiritual if you get into it. Finally, healthy lifestyle choices such as balanced diet, adequate sleep, avoiding substance abuse. All this is essential for maintaining your mental health. Nutrition and sleep have a direct impact on mood and cognitive function, and avoiding these harmful substances can prevent uh, the mental health issue from exacerbating later on in your life, if that makes sense, which it should. So those are strategies. Let's talk about resources available for men, all right? There's a lot of things out there. We're going to hit just a few of them, okay? By no means is this an exhaustive list, okay? First one is faith-based organizations. Again, if you don't have one through your church, there's uh, plenty of them out there. A couple that I have found, uh, Celebrate Recovery. This is a Christ-centered recovery program for individuals struggling with any form of addiction or mental health issue. Another one is Stephen Ministries, a Christian organization that provides one-on-one -on -one care to those uh, in crisis through trained lay caregivers. We have a Stephen Ministry at, at our church. People that are trained to just sit there and listen they're not exactly necessarily the experts, but they may be somebody just to listen to and pray with you for. And maybe they can refer you to somewhere else. You'd be surprised how many times I have been to, to, to a Stephen minister there during times of loss and had them just pray for me. And I, I walk away from them feeling fantastic. Sometimes they anoint your head with oil, just laying hands on you and just giving you that prayer, and that, that direct um attention, letting the Holy Spirit work through them into you is is huge. So Stephen Ministry, a big, big fan of that. Celebrate Recovery, again, is another one you can do. That's a faith-based um, recovery program. There's plenty of other ones. I'm just going to hit, uh, you know, a couple in each of these categories. Uh, fitness programs, the Men's Health Network, you know, think about Men's Health Magazine or any, any of these guys like that. They offer resources and programs specifically tailored to men's health, including physical fitness and mental well-being. Before I went into Marine Corps, I had a men's health subscription. I would literally go in there and try to do every workout that I could find that made sense uh, for my body type in those. So if you don't know where to go and you're a little bit lost, go to, go to men's health, right? Also, join a gym or a local sports club. Most gyms or sports club, whether it's a Planet Fitness or it's a, or it's a, a country club type gym, whatever it might be, they usually have structured fitness programs and classes that can help you support your mental health uh, through physical activity, whether it's group fitness, a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, what have you. Join a gym. Now you have a little community uh, that's apart from your church. Maybe you got a, you know, you're into Christian masculinity. Now all your guys are jacked, and you're, uh, you know, you know, Roger that for the Lord, right? Get in there and, and get after. It. Join a gym, okay? Finally, there's a couple mental health services you can provide veterans. You know, there's the VA hotline. Uh, I believe it's the number. Why is it escaping me? Right? Is it, is it like eight one one? We're gonna look it up right now. I should have had that. Um, uh, nine eight eight. My apologies. If you have a, a suicide or crisis lifeline and you're a veteran, you can just dial nine eight eight and you can talk to somebody twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. Or you can just you know call the VA and talk to them that way. Uh, if you don't have that number, so veterans, you got that that outlet you can you can utilize um, nine eight eight. Don't forget that. Also, the National Alliance on Mental illness, NAMI, NAMI. It provides education, support, and advocacy for individuals affected by mental health, uh, mental health issues and mental illness. Uh, mental Health America is another one. This offers resources, screening tools, and other support services for mental health issues. So again, not an exhaustive list, but we we're going to talk in those three categories. I picked two different uh, organizations in each one of those categories to help you uh, to be the best you possibly can be. So please, if you have an issue, if you are struggling, Reach out and don't be afraid to speak about it because you are important. You matter. You mean a lot to somebody in this world. Okay. You mean a lot to the Lord. He doesn't want to see you uh, depart early uh, because you can't hack it. We're here for each other. All right. So let's conclude. Men's mental health is a critical component of societal well-being. 
This influences your economics. It influences your productivity, your, your social stability, and a, a public health issue. When we address these using those three pillars of fitness, our faith, our fitness, and just these, these well-established mental health strategies, when you leverage these diverse approaches, society can better support men in achieving and maintaining mental health, ultimately leading to a healthier, more resilient community. Because strong men will break the hard times and create good times. And we can break that cycle. And the good times can continue to create strong men and strong men will keep the bad times at bay. Let's break that cycle. But it starts with you, it starts with me and addressing our own mental health. So what do we need to do for the future? Future efforts should really focus on reducing the stigma of seeking mental health and, and being better mentally. Okay, we need to increase awareness and we need to improve, improve access to mental health resources for men. Again, we want to take that $200 billion. And we want to use it effectively, not just use it in a way that keeps guys coming back. We want to solve the problem, get them on their feet, move to the next one until we can eradicate uh, this, this issue. OK, and better allocate those resources um, for, for the future. Right. Policy makers. Healthcare providers and community organizations must collaborate to create an environment where men feel comfortable seeking help and discussing mental health openly. There's a lot of veterans out there, that myself included, who preach on this nonstop. Guys, don't be afraid to talk about your mental health. Okay, there's plenty of people out there for you, plenty of people advocating for you, but there can always be more. Okay, when we prioritize men's mental health, society can foster a more supportive and inclusive culture that benefits everyone. Okay. That's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Chase Tobin. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm going to drop the references uh, in, in the show notes. I'm going to drop some of these, the links to these uh, support networks in the so show notes. That way we are all uh, moving forward in the same direction. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being you. Jesus loves you. I love you. We're here for you. If you are, are struggling, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I, I'm not a, not a professional by any means, but I can do the best that I can. Um, always here to listen. Okay, and and you guys, some of you guys have taken me up on that, and I appreciate that. Thank you for you know, putting your trust and confidence in me, uh, and thank you for listening to me when I've had issues, guys. You know who you are, gents. Stick together, ladies. I know a lot of you guys listen to this too, but you can apply this and learn how to nuance through your relationship with your boyfriend, husband uncle, whoever, when they're going through hard times, you can see some of these things and say, okay, how can I help them uh, with their mental health? Maybe they just need to go out for a run. You never know. Okay. That's all I got for you guys this week. Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, check out Three Pillars Podcast website for all things Three, three Pillars. Check us out over on Good Pods. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to leave you with a lot of things to take out the door, but you guys know what to do. Share the show. That's how we grow. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always, and then kick you guys out for a phenomenal weekend. I love you all. Pray with me. Father God, thank you for putting us on this earth, giving us purpose, giving us a mission, and giving us the tools and resources we need to accomplish that mission. And when we're done with that mission, Lord, you give us another. You continue us on this, this path. Number one, seeking you, but other, number two, helping others to find you and to find their purpose and to find their way on the path. Lord, without you, we are lost. A lot of people think they can navigate this world without you, but they ultimately find out that you are what they needed all along. Thank you for revealing yourself to me in my life. And thank you for working through me to help shine your light to other people. Lord, I ask that anybody tuning into this, just bless them today. Give them peace with whatever they're dealing with, whatever they're struggling with. Guide them through it. See them through it. Put the right people in their life to help them navigate the, the craziness. Lord, I ask that you increase our faith every single day and keep us strong for you every single day. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. That's all I got for you. I'm Chase Tobin, aka Tobinator, the motivator. Until next time, Tobinator out.